Do you remember what a linear function looks like? Which letter represents a linear? It should be kind of a dead giveaway because the word that describes what the e. graph looks like e. 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 Correct. A linear function is a line, and so a linear function is E. Then we did something called quadratic. Qu quadratic was a squared function. Squared. And it had the look of a U. Very good, Trev. A. Excellent. Yep. Okay. Absolute value, v, 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 value, V. Looks like a V, so D is the correct answer. Very good. Okay, the last two are the most difficult, I think, to remember. We have a cube root and a square root. Four is C. Cube root is the snake. Yeah, it was. It was. And then, the, you're so good, the last one is B. Nice job. <laughs> okay. So, keep in mind, again, when you're working through, that your function families, if you change, a linear comes in the form of y equals x. Quadratic comes in the form of y equals x squared. Absolute value comes in the form of y equals absolute x. Cube root is y equals the little 3 on the outside. And then, <laughs> and then the square root is y equals just the, that radical without the little number in the corner. So those are the function families that we look at. And remember, you can change stuff that's going on. Like maybe I would write for an absolute value. It might not look exactly like that. It would look like y equals absolute x plus 2. Oops, straight line. That still is going to have a graph of a v. It's just going to be moved to a different position. Okay? So keep in mind that this is what the general um, parent looks like but the family member can have other numbers with it, all right? And it'll move kind of around the graph. All right, that was one of the first things we did. Another thing that we did was we made tables and graphed the function. So let's do that next. We're gonna make a table. So I'm gonna plug in the value that they give. So for this First one, I'm going to do absolute negative 1 minus 2. Nope. Negative 1 minus 2. If you're not sure what it is, plug it in your calculator. What's negative 1 minus 2? Negative 3. Then you do the absolute value, which makes it positive. So this would be positive 3. Yep, exactly, and you replace the x with that. So then I put 0 in for x, so this is 0 minus 2. 0 minus 2 is negative 2, but the absolute value makes it positive, so I make it positive 2. Okay. Then up next is 2 minus 2. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 is not positive or negative, so it's just going to go in as 0. It's a neutral number. Then I do... 4 minus 2, and I do absolute 5 minus 2. What is the shape of this? Before I even graph it, what's the shape of it? Because it's got these lines on the outside, because it's an absolute value, v. it's going to look like a V. The shape is going to be a V. I should know that going into it. And so now I plot oh. these like points. Keep in mind that that's like the point negative 1, comma 3. So that means I move left 1, up 3, and put a point. This is like 0, comma 2. So that means I don't move left or right. I just move up 2. Then I have 2, 0. Going back to my table, 2 is paired with 0. So I go right 2, up 0. 
then I have 4, 2, right, 4 up 2, and I should see my V start to take shape, 5, 3, right, 5, up 3, and then I'll connect my points, connect the dots, and create my shape. On your quiz on Friday, you're going to have to make a table and sketch the points and make the graph. Okay, so plan on doing that. Let's do another one. The reason that I chose this next problem is because it's squared. And even before we graph the squared, what is it going to look like? Even before I graph it, what does a squared function look like? You can look up at, at the top. It's called quadratic. Not a square root. Squared. Squared is kind of like a U. So if I look up at the top, quadratic or squared is this sort of U-ish, V-ish. It's not super pointy. It's rounded. As opposed to a square root, which is the one that's the side curve. So separate the two square versus square root. All right, so I've got this sort of curved thing. One thing I need to remember, when you square a negative, what happens to it? When you square a negative, what happens to it? Negative times a negative is a positive. positive. Beautiful. So this is positive 4 plus 4. What's positive 4 plus 4? 4 plus 4, friends. 4 plus 4, 8. Great. Okay? Then I do negative 1 squared plus 4. Again, that's negative 1 times negative 1. 1, one plus 4 is 5. five. 0 squared plus 4, 4. four. What? What the heck? What the heck? What did I do? Oh, you know why? Because you, when you squared your negative 2, you didn't make it positive. This is negative 2 times negative 2. If you use your calculator to do this, which you absolutely can, make sure that you put parentheses around the negative 2 before you put the square on it. See how I wrote those parentheses on there? Make sure you put those on there before you put the square on it on your calculator. Otherwise, it won't do the negative part of it squared. So our next one is 1 squared plus 4 or 5 and 2 squared plus 4 or 8. Whenever you see a squared and an absolute value, because they have that shape where it curves back up or it goes back up, you should see this kind of thing happening, this pattern where it's um, kind of going to mirror reflect. And so when I plot those, negative 2, 8, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, 5, 0, 4, then I do my it mirror reflects 1, 5, and 2, 8, and then I can draw my sort of curved shape, almost like a U. So that's the second part of your quiz. You're going to have to recognize your function family's first part. Second part, you're going to have to make some tables and sketch some graphs. And then you're going to do some function notation. And it's been a while since we've done function notation. It feels like it's been a long while. So let's take a look at this last section. Keep in mind what this means, h of 8. It doesn't mean multiply like sometimes we think it's going to mean. When we're dealing with functions, what this tells me is I am going to use the h function. And for x, I'm going to plug in 8. So I'm going to go to the h function and plug in 8. So I'll go over here is the h function. I'm going to do the square root of not x, but, but 8 plus 1 minus 2. Again, it's the h function with 8 plugged in 
8 plus 1 is square root of 9 minus 2. What's the square root of 9? No, that's 9 squared. 3. Three. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure, most of you have a square root key on your calculator that you can use. But square root of 9 is 3 minus 2. My final answer is 1. So h of 8 equals 1. How does number 9 differ? Well, in a couple of ways. The first way is, this time we're using the g function. And we're plugging in negative 3. So I'll take the g function and I plug in negative 3 minus 1. Then I have to figure out what negative 3 minus 1 is. Be careful of that. We just want to say it's like negative 2 right away. Like our brain goes 3 minus 1 is 2. So I'll just put negative 2. It's not. It's negative 3 minus 1, which is like negative 3 plus negative 1. When they're both negative, I end up adding them together. So that's negative 4 squared. And then don't forget, when you square a negative, what happens to it? It becomes positive. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So h of negative 3 is positive 16. I would say write down as much as you can because you can use this review sheet when you take your quiz so that you have something to look back at so that you remember how to do all this stuff. Again, your quiz is on Friday. All right, up next, 10 is different in more than one way. It's got the F function, but what's the other big difference? It equals 9. It's not replace x with 9. Notice where the number is. This number's on the outside. So that means I have to take the f function. Here's the f function, which is 2x plus 5 and set it equal to 9. Do you see that difference? It's sort of a, a, a tiny difference, but if you keep your eyes open and are aware you can recognize how these two differ from each other so when i set it up like this now i need to find x what x would i have to put in that would get nine as an answer now i'm going to go back to solving equations we've done these already how do i solve this what's my first move get rid of what Five. Get rid of 5. Yep, minus 5, minus 5. You can show as much work or as little work as you need to. Some of you guys can do this in your head by now. Some of us need to show more work. I'm a more work kind of girl. So I'm going to minus 5, minus 5. I do it on both sides. I get 2x equals 4. Right here, I sometimes don't show my last step because I just try to figure out what do I multiply by 2 to get 4? 2. So I know that x is 2. If I couldn't figure it out, then I would divide by 2 on both sides. But I could figure that one out pretty quickly. So x equals 2. That means if I plugged 2 in here, f of 2 would be 9. 2 times 2 plus 5 equals 9. And that's a true statement. My last one is the h function. h of x equals 5. That means I'm going to go back to this h function and I'm going to put in the square root of x plus 1 minus 2 equals 5. Now this one's going to require a little bit of work. I'll start the same way by getting rid of that subtraction. So I end up with the square root of x plus 1 equals 7. It was minus 2, so I added 2 on both sides. That got rid of it. Now this is a thinker. Sometimes I really have to think about these things. What number would I add 1 to so that when I take the square root of it, I get 7? It might be easier to think about what has to go inside of here. I like the way you think, Brady. Brady's got it. He said the answer is 48, but why? It's because some number plus 1 has to equal 49. Why 49? Because 
that's what I would take the square root of to get 7. So then if I subtract the 1, I know x has to be 48. All right? So that goes, this stuff that we're doing here, this front page goes back in time a little bit. Um, so that's why I want to make sure we review it before your quiz on Friday. It's your first major quiz of this term. So I want you to make sure that you get everything down, that you have this handy, that you can use this as a, a sheet when you're taking your quiz as guidance to help you. This is all that we're going to do today. The other page, the second half, please take that home, this next side. Take it home with you, and I'll have a video that goes through, just like I did now, I'll have a video that goes through everything tomorrow virtually. So it's going to be your job to watch that video, fill this all in, make sure you're ready for your quiz on Friday. All right? In the meanwhile, 